<laughs> so the time has come. Hey, what's happening to you guys? Paris here and welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going to be discussing why Sekiro Shadow Die Twice is the most rewarding, challenging, and easiest game that we've gotten in recent memories. Now, I know two of those things that I just said are very um, contradicting, but as I explain myself in this video, you'll start to realize that what I'm saying is actually true, especially if you've played Sekiro Shadow Die Twice. Now, the reason, w the reason why I decided to make this video discussing my experience with Sekiro Shadow Die Twice is of the recent discussion that came about this game. Now, if you guys remember, remember a while back, Forbes wrote an article saying that Sekiro Shadow Die Twice needs to have an easy mood in order to respect its players. This caused a lot of dialogue, including myself. I expressed how I felt about that article very clearly. You know, it. I wouldn't say it disgusted me, but essentially it was ridiculous that an article like that came out. And the way that the author of this article tried to justify his stance on why Sekiro Shadow Die Twice needed an easy mode is for the accessibility for people who, are, who may not be capable physically or mentally in that case to be able to play the game and enjoy the story. Now, hiding behind such an argument to me it seems kind of flawed because you could use that argument for every game. If it's not secure Shot of Die twice, you could probably use it for games like um, you know, fighting games for example, where you need high reflexes to be able to, you know, adapt and pretty much just fight at a pace that gives you the advantage. Fighting games is a very complex um, genre in the gaming um, sphere essentially. So you could use that argument for everything, so I personally found it very very flawed that he would use accessibility to justify secure Shadow Die twice um, having an easy mood. It was a sign of weakness, he probably struggled, he couldn't get past the game, so he wanted to justify his weakness by hiding behind such a weak argument. Personally, that's just my opinion. I understand that he wants to be inclusive, but for, me, for my opinion, every game that you want to look at has its way of excluding certain types of players. There are many people who don't like fighting games. There are many people who don't like racing games. There are many people who don't like um, RTS games. It's it, this games are designed to fit a certain market, and From Software knew exactly who their demographic were when they made Secure Shadow Die Twice. They wanted players who accepted challenges, who wanted to test their skills, their mental capacity, and their ability to learn from their failures. That's the, that's the market, the demographic that they were aiming for. So they hit that to a T. Now recently, another article came out. This time, this one came out from PC Gamer, in which the title read, I beat Sekiro Final Boss with cheats and I feel fine. No shame. This article kind of annoyed me. It pissed me off to some degree. Not on a personal level, but it, it pissed me off to the sense that they want to try and justify weakness. They want to normalize using cheat codes in games. They want to they wanna make it come across that if you use cheat codes, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, personally, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, if you want to use it in your own time, you don't have enough time or you're struggling, whatever, that's the thing. But I, I know what they're trying to do, and I think most of us who've played Secure Shadow Die twice and who are reading the article, by the way, the article does contain spoilers, so I just want to warn you um, beforehand in case you want to go and look it up. But they want to try and justify their weakness, in a sense. Now, the reason why I said that Secure Shadow Die twice is the most challenging, um, challenging, rewarding, and yet easiest game that has ever that has ever come out in recent memories is that when you first boot up let me let me tell you my experience when it comes to Sekiro Shadow Die twice and why I really really enjoy this game and why I feel like a lot of us who are playing the game are enjoying the game as well when I played Sekiro Shadow Die twice I got my ass kicked numerous times numerous times like it was just pathetic like how many times I got my ass beat by simple NPCs, by simple mini bosses. Well, you know, simple it really depends on who you're talking to, but it was just bad. But what I learned while playing Sekiro Shadow Die twice is that it taught me how to play the game. I learned from my failures. And 
as I continued to progress through the game, the enemies that were once difficult and almost impossible to beat felt easy. And I don't mean easy as in, oh yeah, I've powered up, I've beaten several, several bosses, I've gotten the um, necklace beard, beads or whatever, I've gotten the powers of my previous enemies, now I feel stronger. No, 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 no. What I mean is that their attack patterns become so easy that you begin to ask yourself, how in the hell did I get stuck to a boss like this? This happened numerous times. Now, I don't know the names of most of the bosses off by head, but if I describe them to you, you'll know who I'm talking about. So for example, one of the major bosses that I got stuck against was the red-eyed um, red monster that was chained um, at the, uh, oh, the outskirts castle. You know what I mean. You know, he came out of the way, he had this weird grapple attack that would pretty much grab you and then smack you to the ground. It was a tough battle, like it, it was pretty tough, you, you had to kind of learn his patterns over and over again before you finally realized, you know what, it was actually easy. Next one was the guy um, on top of the castle, the guy who can wield lightning, you know who it is. I feel like most of us encountered this boss and just realized, holy shit, this guy is a pain in the ass. Um, I think his name is Genichiro, Genichiro I believe. Genichiro was the guy that you fought at the very beginning when you first booted up the game. And you know, he came again at the top of the castle. And essentially this guy, he was just unbelievable tough for me at the time of me playing this game. He was powerful, his attacks were really fast, I couldn't figure out how to over this boss but then as I played the game more and more and as I began to realize that this guy has a pattern he has a limited amount of moves to, that he has to do and yes he mixes them up really really well and he also fakes his, his attacks so it makes it even more difficult but when I figured out that I had to use the Mikiri counter which by the way after my first 20 year counter, I didn't use the Mikiri counter because I didn't realize I had such a technique in my arsenal. When I flew through the game, I skipped a lot of the tutorials because I thought to myself, you know what, I can figure this stuff out. You know how we are as gamers, when we play games, we don't like to read the tutorials. We, we are always saying to ourselves, I can figure this out. It took me 20 tries for me to realize, oh shit, I can just use the Mikiri counter at the Ashina, um, well, sorry, at the um, Gench Genichiro boss, and once I realized that and utilized that extra technique, the boss battle became simply easy. It's not easy, easy, but it became easy to the point where if I lost that boss battle, it was on my, it was my fault. It was because I was aggressive. I wasn't. No, it, okay. It depends on what situation. So one situation could be I was too aggressive. The other situation could be I was not aggressive enough. Like there was a balance. You have to find the balance. And when you defeat the boss, when you defeat a boss that took you hours to beat, there's a sense of accomplishment. It's not gonna translate into real world um, accomplishment, obviously. But for you personally, there's a sense of growth behind it. There's a sense of I have accomplished this. So when I see um, when I see articles from polygons and articles from you know Forbes and all that stuff trying to justify cheating, trying to justify uh, or trying trying to pressure uh, from software to add an easy mode, it defeats the purpose, the experience that you're gonna get when you play the game. I don't know, like. I've put almost 20 hours into the game, but I've been doing a lot of exploration. I've just been scouring every single nooks and crannies and that I can find in the maps. And personally, I've just been having an absolute blast playing this game. They, the, the, post, the person who, who used cheat in you know, the final boss or whatever, he missed out on a great opportunity. He just threw away his only satisfaction that he could possibly get from beating that boss. All in an effort to try and say, fuck what the developers have created for us. Fuck um, trying to improve myself and trying to improve my skills. I don't have time for that bullshit. I'll just use my cheat code, see the end story and walk away. He's trying to add this spin to it, which, you know, I guess, like, I guess he's trying to say that, you know, we don't have time to be struggling against an NPC. We have real life stuff to do and all things like that. I can just use a cheat code. I don't know. I see this and I was like, 
they're trying to justify weakness. That's just the overall message that I'm getting. They're trying to justify weakness. And I, like, I, I keep saying this. This is not me saying that, you know, if you play Sekiro and you beat the game, you're overall a, you know, superior human being to the rest of your, you know, fellow humankind or whatever the case may be. Once you drop the game and you walk outside, you're, you're just gonna be an average dude. No one's gonna care that you beat Sekiro. Uh, unless you're talking to fellow gamers, that's that's about it. But I don't know. It's just frustrating. Like I watched a bunch of people who are playing the game, and one of my favorite ones I'm watching right now is Afro Senju. He has a way of he has a way of just editing his videos that just makes it a little bit interesting to watch. I guess personally, but watching people like him and other people as well struggle playing through the game because let's face it when you watch people because I'm way ahead of most of most of the people that I'm watching right now so um, I'm watching let's say yeah, Afro Senju, um, Brittany Venti, um, Heavenly Controller like I'm watching a bunch of these people and being ahead of them and then seeing them struggle as well it's it's a weird satisfaction it's like oh you're not doing this you're supposed to do that ah oh, but you know that it's not their fault it is not their fault because they too are now in the process of learning and obviously when you're in the comment section and you're just ramping down, oh, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that, blah, 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 blah. It's like you're ruining the experience from them in some way. Like, you, they have to learn it from themselves. Now, and also, there's another thing I want to point out as well when it comes to Sekiro Shadow Die Twice. As you progress through the story, I'm sure some of you have started to notice that you've become more confident in yourself. At the beginning, when you were playing um, Sekiro Shadow Die Twice, every enemy seemed like a huge threat. Every enemy seems like they're gonna take you down, they're gonna take out, they can just destroy you completely. But as you get closer and closer to the end of the game, you feel more confident. Every enemy is like, oh shit, what's good, boy? <laughs> like, you, you wanna start the fight. That's how it's, that's how I felt playing the game. At the beginning, I wanted to run away, I wanted to sneak, I wanted to do all that stuff. But as I progressed, I wanted to pick fights. I was like, yeah, I am that man, I am that shinobi, I am that fucking shinobi come like try and fight me like, that's how i felt anyways maybe i'm trying to make it seem all epic or whatever but the point is to put it very simply the game is super rewarding it is super rewarding it is super challenging it gets you using your brain because you have to plan your strategy you have to know what items to use you have to know when to strike your opponent how many times you're gonna have to strike your opponent when to deflect their attacks when to parry their attacks when to mirror counter like your pacing, it, I don't know, it's such a really, really rewarding game, and we haven't gotten a game like this in quite some time where it doesn't hold your hand, it doesn't really hold your hand, you have to figure things out yourself, and that is why I think Sekiro Shadow Die Twice is the most rewarding, challenging, and easy game, like I said before, the game teaches you while you fail, and the more you fail, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you realize that the game is easy, like, I feel like we can all relate to this. How many times have you beaten a boss and then realized this boss is fucking easy? I'll give you a perfect example. Ah, okay, this is gonna, it's not gonna, oh, Jesus Christ, how do I put it without spawning anything? Okay, there's a certain enemy, right? <laughs> okay, that's a really bad way of describing this. Okay, there's a certain animal enemy. I feel like this alone should be enough. There's a certain animal enemy that you'll encounter. This animal enemy just moves around fanatically, it, his movement just seems crazy, and he's just all over the fucking place. And then when you beat him, his second phase is even worse. He picks up the very sword that you used to kind of, you know, behead him, I'll put it this way, to behead him, and he starts doing all this other extra crazy stuff, and you're like, what the fuck? But then when you beat him, and then you move on and you realize there's another one that's just like that he's easy why because you've learned his mechanics you've learned how he fights with that weird sword and the other thing that he has holding in his hand i'm not gonna let you know what it is but if you reach that point you know what i'm talking about the game is rewarding right now i'm in the part where um pfft, what part am i in actually well there's a girl that's looking for lord senku or something like that and <laughs> I've tried ignoring her and she turns into a fucking ghost. But, uh, no, um, yeah. O overall, this is what I mean when I say that gaming journalism is trying to normalize weakness. 
when you when you hear people say oh do this game journalist ever play games can they even play games and then you're like and then they try to justify it but then release articles like this it's like come on dude Sekiro Shadow Die Twice is not for everyone this is very clear and simple I have people I know people who I've told about Sekiro Shadow Die Twice and they said that it's not a game for them did I belittle them? Did I did I say, oh, you're a li you're a little bitch? Okay, I can't. I wouldn't use the word bitch because this person is a female, but a woman. But you know, I I wouldn't make fun of her. Essentially, she likes to play, you know, um, Animal Crossing and oh, what's the other game? The Sims or whatever the case may be. That's the type of game she likes. She doesn't want to play Secure or Shadow Twice, so I left it as it is because I, I didn't want to. Obviously, why would why would I do that? Like, why would anyone even do that? Like, I would like to see her play it just to just to see her struggle. But overall, Secure is not for everyone. And the people who are playing it, some people who played it, they dropped it because but they had struggles with it. Some people played it and they continue to play it. But overall, my experience with this game has been absolutely fantastic. I'm, I want to finish the game before I release a full-blown review for it, but I just wanted to speak on Polygon's article and Forbes' article and quite possibly more articles to come that's gonna try and demonize Sekiro Shadow Die... Sorry, sorry, I, 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 I do this a lot. Sekiro Shadow Die Twice and... Difficulty? The game is difficult when you don't pay attention. That is how I'm gonna put it. If you don't pay attention to what the game is trying to tell you, you're gonna find it very, very difficult. If you don't utilize all the abilities that, that are given to you, like the Mikiri counter, the certain special sword that you get on down in the story, um, all the items. This, listen, do you know what's funny actually? I'm gonna I'm say this. this is, I don't think this is a spoiler, but the game is difficult right now because you know you're not paying attention but there's actually a way that you can even increase the difficulty in this game so clearly um, from software have no intention of making this game easy they have no intention of putting in an easy mode because they had a choice they could have gone with an easy mode but instead they implemented a system in which when you hit something a bell it increases the difficulty of the game I accidentally did that and I had to get rid of it because you know listen I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I'm not ready for that yet. But um, yeah, and over and overall as well. Like, if I'm being honest with you, I would rather have the creators, the developers, create the game in their own vision. If they really wanted an easy mood, they could have done it after Demon Souls, but they didn't. They kept it going after Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and now um, Sekiro. They could have done it, but no. They realized that they have a demographic that would like this type of games, and instead of just put like, okay, I get the argument that putting an easy mode um, it wouldn't take anything away from the experience that you can get if you choose the difficult mode. But the argument that I would say is that it would it would it would defeat the purpose of Sekiro. Sekiro was designed so that there is no easy mode. You can only make if you want an easy mode learn the game and I, I really hate to use these words but that is the only thing I can think of you have to get good get good <laughs> that's not how you said but you have to get good you have to get good if you want the game to be easy if you continue to fight against the game and you continue to object its help to teach you by having your ass completely beaten by every single living thing <laughs> in this game you're going to have a very difficult time and if you don't go into this game with an open mind like with an open mind that's just your fault like i'm not the best player in the world i'm not the shittiest i okay if i were to put myself on a category and this is me just talking because i have a little bit of an ego i would say i'm above average above average so that there's like shit noob okay good above average and then s tier I'm above average. I'm not S tier yet because you know, I don't have enough time to put into games, but I'm above average. I can pick up a game and do pretty okay. That's my whole premise of it. Anyways, that's just my experience and my thoughts on Sekiro Shadow Die Twice. I wanted to make this video because I just wanted to express my thoughts and opinion. Um, I don't know what to say, man. I'm really getting sick and tired of people trying to promote weakness. That's how I'm putting it. I don't care if you take offense to it. It is weakness if you have to use a cheat code. It is a s the only person that you're cheating is yourself. That that's how it is. 
And it's amazing that they have the audacity to write the blog, to actually write it down and say, I cheated and I'm okay with that. My soul is fine. Like, why? Who gives a fuck about your soul? You've cheated yourself out of everything. Sorry, I'm stuttering. You've cheated yourself out of a really great experience that you that you could have had it if you just powered through it. I feel like Sekiro is showing a small reflection of how people are really ah, in nature. Because people who don't give up, they'll power through it. And people who usually tend to give up very easily, they're the ones who'll be making articles like this. But anyways, that's just my thoughts and opinion. No slander, kind of a little bit of slander, but no slander. My... Oh shit, I'm, pa <laughs> I'm Paris and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.